and Mrs. Knorr, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. speak to you about, Mr. Compton, privately. Privately? The Fred Hewitt estate. $78,000 shortage. $78,000, Mr. Compton. Mr. Compton, I know at a time like this, you're not interested in my troubles. But I haven't been very well lately. Last week, I went in for a complete physical checkup. This morning, I received the report of that checkup from my doctor. I've just learned I only have a few months to live. Mr. Compton, a man with only a few months to live has very little to lose. You, on the other hand, have a great deal to lose. All my life I've been poor. I think a man's entitled to something before he dies. This, Mr. Compton, is a confession. Admitting that I embezzled instead of you, $78,000 from the trust fund of Fred Hewitt. For $10,000, I'll sign that confession. You see, Mr. Compton, I intend to enjoy my last few months. What proof have I that you'll go through with this? As I said before, Mr. Compton, I have nothing to lose. They can't put a dead man in jail. And I shall be dead long before the annual audit of the books. How do I know you're really sick? I took the precaution of having my doctor call your personal physician as a consultant. He confirmed the diagnosis. Mr. Compton, if my figures are correct, you have $12,220 in your office safe over there. I'll take $10,000 in cash. Oh, it's quite complete. As I said before, I wouldn't cheat you. I have nothing to lose. However, I am in a hurry. I think it'll be better if we talk this thing over in the morning. No, we'll settle it now, Mr. Compton. I have very little time. explain why you sent me the confession. You won't. The confession will be found on my body. You mean I don't get to keep it? That's right. Those are my terms. You'll either profit by my death, or you'll read of the unfortunate event while sitting in jail. Silence. Thank you, Mr. Compton. Good night. 
I heard it all. You fool. He's got $10,000, and what have you got? Nothing. I had no choice. You had no choice. Haven't you got any backbone? No, if I had, I wouldn't have allowed you to get me into this mess. Are you trying to blame this on me? Money, that's all you care about. I got it for you, and you spent it. And now I'm in trouble. It's because you were so clumsy about it. Can't you ever do anything right? According to you, no. Let's get going. We can't keep the Mortons waiting. Try not to look so guilty. Let the Mortons think something's wrong, and you'll lose their account. Then you'll have to get a new wife as well as a new auditor. Hello. Hello, Mr. Nord. This is Tuttle. I'm sorry, I'm going to be a few moments late. Well, have you any idea how long it will be? You see, my wife is uh, going to take me to the ballet. Oh, fine. Yes, everything is ready for you. All right, thank you. Bye. Who was that, Jerry? Mr. Tuttle. Say you'll be a few minutes late. Every time that man helps us with our income tax report, it costs us money. Is there anything else you need, Mr. Tuttle? No, I, I don't think so. No, I, I think that's about all. I'll, uh, I'll get you some envelopes so uh, you can mail them in. <laughs> Do we get all that back? No, dear. That's what we pay. Here we are, Mr. North. <laughs> of course, that, that one item is liable to be contested, but uh, you have all the data, so... Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's that. <laughs> well, here, I'll uh, make out your check for you. Will that be the same as last year? Well, if you don't mind, Mr. North, I, I'd like this to be a little present for me. You see, I'm retiring. I, I haven't been so, so well lately, and so I'm taking a little vacation. Oh, well, that's very nice of you, but I feel, I feel we should pay you something. Well, it's, it's been my pleasure, Mr. North. It's nice knowing such a, such a lovely couple. Well, now, I, I know you're in a hurry, so I, I won't detain you. Here, I'll be Oh, thank you. Well, it's, it's been nice knowing you, Mr. North. Thank you. And, and good luck. Well, thank you, Mr. Tuttle. And a pleasant journey to you. What? Oh. Oh, oh yes, of course. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. North. Goodbye, Mr. Tuttle. Good night. Well, it was certainly nice of him. Oh, he's a sweet old man, isn't he? Jerry, you know we have tickets to the ballet. Not oh, a ballet. Look, darling, well, wouldn't it be much nicer just to spend a quiet evening at home? You know, get to bed early and... Jerry, you didn't hear a word of complaint out of me when I went with you to the fights last week. All right, darling. I promise to cheer even if Pavlova only gets a decision. You know, I've always wanted to come to this place. It's my boss's favorite spot. He says, you make the best martini in town. <laughs> you know something? I think maybe he's right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. More olives, please. You're cleaning me out. You've had 23 of them already. Oh, but who counts? I'm mad for them. Uh, maybe uh, the young lady would like this one. No, thanks. Would you care for another drink, sir? No, I don't think so. Just, uh, just the check. I'm sorry if I seem rude to you, but, well, you sort of startled me. Oh, well, I thought, as we both seem to be alone... Uh, I'll have the same as his. I'm Jenny Holloway. Oh, how do you do? I'm, uh, George Tuttle. Miss Holloway. It is uh, Miss, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, a pretty girl like you. <laughs> How come you're not married? What's the matter with all the young men in this town? Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're quite welcome, I'm sure. You know, Mr.
Mr. Tuttle, I, uh, I have had many offers of marriage, but, well, there was always my widowed mother and my little sister Agnes. Poor, sick little Agnes. Oh, but I mustn't burden you with my troubles. Oh, that's all right, my dear. You can talk to me as you would your own father. Oh, you are kind. <laughs> oh, uh... I'm going to take you home. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll add one or two, two minutes. <laughs> well, you just lean on me. Excuse me. Thanks. This way, ladies. Tuttle, go after him. He's drunk. He could talk. He could do a lot of things that wouldn't be healthy for you. All right, you take care of the boys. Tell him I've gone back to the office to pick up something I forgot. I'll be back as soon as I can. And don't forget anything this time.
to a nice long sleep. I can't find it. It's got to be here somewhere. Keep looking. Oh, what do you think I'm doing? Wait a minute. Here I've it is. Got... Auditor takes life. George Tuttle, head auditor of the Metropolitan Trust, committed suicide by asphyxiation last night. He was discovered in his apartment at 572 McMahon Street early this morning with the gas jets open when the neighbors complained to the management of the smell of gas. Well, go on. What does it say about the confession? Nothing. That's all there is. But it can't be. The police must have gone through his papers. I predicted this. Tuttle's double-crossed you. I don't believe it. What are you doing? I'm going to call the police. The police? Are you crazy? Not yet. I was Tuttle's employer. I've got some right to ask questions. Oh, all right. Be careful what you say. Police headquarters. Hello? This is W.J. Compton of Metropolitan Trust. I want some information about the Tuttle suicide. Lieutenant Brown speaking, Mr. Compton. I've just read about it, Lieutenant. I was deeply shocked. Yes, Mr. Compton? I was wondering, Lieutenant, uh, was there anything found among his effects? Anything that I should know of uh, as his employer? No, not a thing. I see. Thank you, Lieutenant. What'll I do? The auditors will be here now that Tuttle is dead. I can't stop them. They'll, they'll find the shortage. Oh, pull yourself together. If Tuttle didn't destroy the confession, then the girl must have it. The girl? The one from the bar, the one who was in his room. You'll have to find her. But how? I don't know... Get over to the bar, talk to the bartender. But the bartender doesn't come on duty till six o'clock. Then you be there at six o'clock. It's your only lead, you poor fool. Get over there. You've got to find her and get that paper. Pam. Hello, darling. Hello. Did you see this? Oh, Jerry. Oh, how awful. Poor Mr. Tuttle. But why should he want to kill himself? He seems so happy. I don't know, darling. It's a terrible thing, isn't it? Oh, it makes me sick. But I can't understand it. He said he was going to retire and go on a vacation. Yeah, I know. Well, I, maybe this is what he meant. You know, sometimes you just can't figure people. Jerry, I'll bet this had something to do with it. What? I found it behind the hall table this morning. I tried to call him, but there was no answer. To whom it may concern. Certainly looks like Tuttle's handwriting. Let's open it and see what's inside. Well, we can't do that. That's for the police. Who says to whom it may concern? Of course, if you think I shouldn't, um... Oh, my. What? I, I accidentally opened it. Oh, now, really, Pam. Jerry! He was a crook. Who? What are you talking about? Mr. Tuttle. He stole all from his employer. Don't you see he wasn't going to take a vacation? He'd embezzle the money, and then he knew that the jig was up. Oh, man. Where do you get expressions like the jig was up? And besides, Mr. Tuttle wouldn't even read a newspaper headline without giving the boy a dime. It's true. Read this. Tuttle's signature, all right. But offhand, I'd say he'd be more apt to kill himself than to steal. Uh, oh, we better tell Mr. Compton. Yeah, first thing in the morning. No, Jerry, tonight. This is important. I'll look up their address in the phone book. Oh, no. Look, I told you, mister, she never comes in this early. The odds are she won't show up at all. Oh, wait. There seems to be something wrong with my stomach. Give me some more milk. Hello, Grace. Yeah, she's not here yet. Hi, Mabel. She's here. Joe, I think I left my cigarette case here. Yes, you did. Oh, thanks. I got this from my father. Well, see you around. I want to talk to you. Oh, but I, I'm in a hurry. So am I. I know you've got his wallet and there was $10,000 in it. Say, what are you, a cop? You're in a lot of trouble, but if you do as I tell you, I think I can help you out. What do you want? The dough? I don't want the money. I'll tell you about it on the way. Get going. I 
been going crazy not knowing what was happening. Did you get it? Not yet. Say, what is this? You said I could keep the money. Is this a double cross? I don't want the money. Well, then what's the deal? What's all the mystery about? And who's she? Never mind who I am. You'll be told all you have to know. Shut up, both of you. I told you I didn't want the money. I want the paper. The what? The paper you took from Tattle. Where is it? I don't know what you're talking about. It must be in the wallet. Say, what is this? Well, where is it? I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. Keep quiet. No, it's too late. Whoever it is must have heard our voices. See who it is. Sit down and keep your mouth shut. Mr. Compton, I'm Gerald North, and this is my wife. I uh, don't quite know how to put this, Mr. Compton, but... What Jerry's trying to say is that your Mr. Tuttle was a crook. Come in. You see, Mr. Tuttle has been uh, making out our income tax returns for several years now. We read in the paper tonight that he'd killed himself, and we thought you ought to see this. He left it at our place when he was there last night. He, he killed himself? What is it, dear? It's... It's a confession. Tuttle's a thief. He stole over $70,000 of the firm's money. Confession? Well, isn't it terrible? I, I can hardly believe it. Well, frankly, neither could we. Mr. Tuttle, it, it just doesn't seem to make sense. If he needed money, he should have come to me. William is generous to a fault. It's been a great shock. Well, it was very nice of you to bring it to us. No, not at all. Well, if you'll excuse us, we'll be running along. I'll turn it over to the police. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You're not going yet, dear. We have things to talk over, remember? And it's our secret. You can't go now. Oh, can't I? Well, just try and stop me. Listen, last night I met Mr. Tuttle in a bar. I went home with him and I, well, I lifted his wallet. But when I left him, he was sleeping like a baby. She's had a few drinks. Don't pay any attention to her. Oh, yes, they will. Tonight, that mug practically kidnapped me, and he and this woman were ready to murder me just to get that paper you walked in with. Don't listen to her. She's crazy. Maybe I am, but I'm not crazy enough to be left here alone with you two. Why don't you stop her? Mr. Compton, why were you so interested in that confession? I... I'm president of the company. I knew there was a shortage. How did you know there was a confession? Oh, leave me alone. I... I have nothing more to say. Well, I think you have. And I know the man who can make you say it. Pam, get on the phone and get Lieutenant Wigan. Tell him to get right over here. Hello, Bill. This is Pam. This is about the Tuttle suicide case. Can you come to the Compton apartment right away? Good. Oh, I see. Yes. <sighs> Yes, Bill, send an ambulance right away. What is it, Pam? He didn't kill Tuttle, and Tuttle didn't commit suicide. He died of congestive heart failure, too much liquor and excitement for a sick man. Pam, what else did Bill tell you? He said there was a bottle of brandy beside Tuttle, and it was loaded with poison called Toxicine. Slow but deadly. He said that Tuttle didn't drink any of it, but I think I know who did. You poor son. Stupid fool. Didn't you do anything right? Yes. One thing. I drank a glass of very good brandy. <laughs> of Internal Revenue. Uh, shouldn't you do something about it? What's today's date? Uh, March 15th. Why?
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilms. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.